Here is another interesting problem. It says, show by means of an example that the limit of product of two functions may exist even though neither limit of this fx approach when x approaches a nor limit of gx exists as x approaches a. So what we are trying to say is that the limits of the functions themselves don't exist at as x approaches a but product of that function exists at x approaches a is that possible that's the first question right if it is possible then we need to give an example okay now there are many situations where this is actually possible right let me give you uh, some examples now like if you have a function consider this kind of function it will consider two functions we have to consider two right f, f and g s Okay, let's, let's try to give two functions here. And uh, so if we design a function whose value, let's say point A, and let's approach A as, let's say this is my point A, right? So if we are approaching A, then the function's limit does not exist. That means it could be a step here, right, at A, right? So let us first design our function f of x and so f of x we can say is equal to we can give a value here and say well it goes like this. Let's say this value is 1 let us say right and uh, and this is 0 right and we say well at this point a we have a hole here because that's the function and and this is my this is how I define f of x right and on the other hand I define a function g of x which I say, well, this is my function g of x, and here, what happens actually is that um, I have minus 1 here. So I say, this time, what happens is that g of x is kind of from here to this, like going like minus 1, and for this value, we make it separate, different, and this is the difference, correct? So imagine, this point for us is a, okay? A. So at A, when we approach from the right side, we are at 0, right? But when we approach from the left side, the limit of the function is minus 1. Since the limit of the function does not matches from both left and right side, we say that the limit does not exist at A. Same is the case for f of x, right? So we can write f of x equals to a piecewise function and we say f of x equals to 1 if x is greater than or equal to a, right? And is equal to 0 if x is less than a, correct? Similarly here, we are defining g of x. And we say g of x is equal to, in this case, 0 if x is greater than or equal to a, but is equal to minus 1 if x is less than a, correct? So clearly limits of f of x and g of x do not exist right but how about limit limit of f of x times g of x so let's consider that limit limit of the function f of x times g of x now what happened to them so if you multiply then 1 times 0 becomes 0 so it is 0 here right and on this side it is minus 1 times 0, so it's 0, right? So basically, f of x times g is a 0 function, right? So it's actually 0. So this is a 0 function. So for the limit a, yes, the limit is 0, correct? So the limit exists, and it is 0 for a also, right? So that is how we can design a function whose limit may exist, but its combination of the two, which made that function uh, may not have the limit at that point okay so this is this is a thinking and communication question which you should understand and try to explain it in the test very clearly as i explained it to you thank you